what I hope to do is take one of these cordless screwdrivers and see if I can turn it into a small generator set for small electronics as an emergency power supply. So these usually can be had for pretty cheap because usually the battery gets weak or non-functional so basically you're just trying to salvage the gearhead motor so whatever one offers the best opportunity to turn it into a uh, generator set and usually I'm going to be more concerned about the front part than the back part but uh, so we'll see kind of just do a quick test see which one turns the easiest I'll just put a wrench on it and give it a quick turn see if it's the gear ratio I want go ahead and put a channel locks in the front of this to see how hard it turns so this actually turns pretty easily so I did some preliminary kind of on screen on this thing and took it apart already but essentially it turns really hard and it's got a clutch mechanism up in the front part so basically it would be much harder to turn into a generator set so not all cordless screwdrivers are created equal when it comes to trying to turn them into a generator set. Also you could probably use a cordless uh, actual drill but um, get one cheap at Goodwill or some garage sale. But uh, So anyways this is probably the one I'm going to go with. I kind of know, I already scouted these out but I'll, I'll show you in internal guts of these just to show you why I prefer this one. So the next idea would be to think of a way to put a handle on the front of this. I can turn it with my hand. And so this is basically just a uh, wooden toy wheel you can buy at any craft store. I just drill the hole slightly bigger so I could put this uh, magnetic uh, bit holder, glue it to the uh, to the shaft here, and then of course this hexon, hexagonal base fits right into the, uh, oops, wrong, wrong one, fits right into the uh, cordless, so. So anyways, that's one potential handle. You really don't have to pull the handle even. Basically you can just take a, uh, a small ratchet, use a small socket that has a, uh, basically a, uh, Allen wrench that will go between the two. So basically, I can just use this as a uh, my uh, ratchet as a uh, handle for this. No real construction needed then. It actually makes a fairly decent handle. It's got a lot of leverage. So I'll show you why I don't want to run with the uh, one with the uh, basically clutch mechanism in the front. It's a uh, mostly pre-disassembled it beforehand here, but uh, basically there's this uh, bunch of washers that are a clutch assembly up in the front, and uh, and I checked, and there's, it's actually no real easy turning back down in the motor here, so I don't know what's going on, if this thing's just locked up or whatever, but, uh, so, I'm going to skip this one, this one looks too complicated to uh, turn into a uh, generator set. And I just generally like the feel of this and the RPMs I can turn it at. So my plan is to intercept the wires that run from the uh, back of the gearhead motor to the batteries in this thing and uh, run some wires to the outside so basically I can take the uh, power that's running to the batteries and the battery power itself and run it externally to a couple wires so it's easier to manipulate uh, power packs on the outside of this that I may want to charge with my home built generator set here so and some tools you'll need are a pretty basic set of tools just a regular Phillips and then a uh, smaller jeweler's size Phillips screwdriver and nice flat blade screwdriver usually comes in handy for stuff so I'll go ahead and get to it. So it looks like this case has three Phillips 
screws holding it together and then the one wire clip up in the front. So basically it's uh, pretty straightforward. I'll just take this one out. and get these Let's start prying on this okay it looks like it's this wire clip up here is holding the assembly together so I'll just go ahead and yank that thing out That's out. So there it is. The electric motor and the gear head assemblies forward to that. Essentially what's inside here is just some planetary gears. Uh, kind of falling apart, but it looks pretty simple to straighten it back up so I can get it back together here pretty easily. In case you ever were curious what planetary gears look like, you can take a look here. And this was the next piece of assembly that goes down in there. Oops, gears are falling out on me. So, and then, nice brass washer that kind of holds the assembly together. And then the, uh, the motor gear goes in the uh, final set of gears there. All right, well. <laughs> Let me work on it, but it should go together. And the next component here, all set in place. Basically, it's a, uh, a gear with a platform for three more gears. Let's pop that right in. On top the other gears. So the switching such on this uh, that uh, basically you can't turn the uh, the cordless on when you have it plugged into the uh, battery charger and there's a forward and reverse switch so basically I'm going to bypass the switching up here just too much for me to deal with and I'll just basically just attach a uh, 9 volt battery clip you can buy uh, like a 5 pack for a, I don't know, a buck or two and uh, just attach the, uh, the leads to the front and back of the battery and then uh, run the wires externally and this will be my external uh, connection to power small electronics or battery packs up so I'll go ahead and do that so I'll go ahead and use my uh, solder gun and a little bit of a solder to uh, attach the lead here so there it is there's my uh, 9 volt battery clip soldered to the front and back of this battery so now I'll just uh, cut a little slot so I can run the 9-volt uh, battery clip wires outside the case here. So we'll go ahead and do that. So now i got a little slot so I can run the wire to the outside with. So to show that I'm actually putting some voltage into the battery back here through my clips, Use this voltmeter, press the button, and turn the crank and get some voltage. So we're at 0.976. So this battery is completely dead in this machine. We'll go ahead and press the button. We don't get anything. So go ahead and use this ratchet. It makes a really nice handle, actually. And I go ahead and spin it and push the button here and put a charge in the battery, and then. Uh, See how much charge I can get in there in a couple seconds here. I'm spinning, oops, got a 
Okay, now I go ahead and press the button here and any spinning you see will be the charge I put in the battery. So put a little bit of a charge in for all that effort, but uh, so there we go. So once your batteries are charged up with the little generator set I showed you, you can put the batteries, your AA batteries in a battery pack like this. And this has a uh, mini USB connection where you can plug it into a uh, Nexus 7 or a Nexus 10 tablet. And uh, you can power up your uh, Nexus 7 with the batteries you charged on your cordless screwdriver. So they run at about 8 9 bucks, $2 shipping from Hong Kong. So and again, your generator set I have would charge at about 2.5 volts. So essentially I could only charge one battery at a time and then I'd have to set it in this machine. And of course you can get these emergency backup battery packs for your iPad too. It's just all about the uh, getting the correct plug-in. So you should be able to just about power up anything with your hand crank generator. So essentially I did the same thing. I took a 9 volt battery clip and I intercepted the wires at the internal batteries here. And uh, so now I have a external connection for small electronic devices that I want to power. And uh, so and this has diodes inside, so basically it doesn't matter which way you turn the crank, it will always charge the battery, so hey, that's kind of nice. And So I'll go ahead and show you how I, uh, where I intercepted the wires at. And this is kind of nice because this is actually already set up to be a hand crank generator. So start out easy. So this has four small Phillips screws that hold the case together. And I'll just go ahead and use my uh, small Phillips screwdriver to undo it. So this is the case split in half. Now there's some smaller flip screws holding the circuit board here together and I want to get at the wires underneath because I think it's going to be easier to intercept the battery wires if I remove this circuit board so go ahead and try to locate all the Phillips screws holding the circuit board to the uh, one half of the uh, casing here and uh, go ahead and show you when I'm completed So what I did is I lifted this circuit board off and I traced the wires from this battery up to the circuit board and then I basically just intercepted the wires. I, I soldered the 9 volt clip right to the uh, to the battery wires going up to the clipboard and I've since used some uh, hot glue just to make everything hold together and so nothing shorts out but uh, so anyways I just basically used a solder gun and heated up the insulation melted it off and put a dab of solder on and intercepted the wires to the battery right there or from the battery to the uh, circuit board so now this is a uh, connected to the battery supply onboard battery supply so now I can use these onboard batteries as a kind of a uh, reservoir for when I want to charge external electronic devices and I believe the voltage here is what is the voltage it's 3.6 volts so 